Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about how I enjoy life when I have nothing. I will tell you what I mean by that in this video. So let me tell you a story first of a bucket, a very boring seeming story, but let me tell you what it is, right? I wanted a bucket for a very long time. It seems a strange thing to want to have, but I wanted it, right? I wanted to wash some like delicate clothing. I have a lot of wool jumpers that I can't just chuck in the washing machine. I wanted to try out that rice bucket thing that everyone's doing to like strengthen their forearms and like get better grip and stuff like that. So I needed a, a bucket for various different things. And I was like searching around my house and asking family and things like that. I was like, can I use this bucket? They're like, oh no, I'm, we're using it for the mop. And can I use that bucket? No, we're using it for that. I just kind of like was waiting around. I was like, mm, I couldn't really get one. I'm not an impulse buyer either. I don't just like go out and just buy a bucket because then you end up with like, you know, 12 buckets in your house with no one using them. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll wait for a bit and see what happens. And if push comes to shove, I'll have to go and get a bucket. And it turns out, I took six quid and I bought this bucket right here. So this is an, an image that I got online, but it turns out to be very similar to the bucket I have. And it's one that I'm really happy with. Right? It's only six quid and it made me so happy. Like the reason I made this video was because I was sitting down in my room one day and I was looking at the bucket across the room. And I was like, man, I love that bucket, right? And that seems such a weird thing to think and a weird like thing to be happy about. But I was happy about this small, tiny thing, right? Isn't that curious? So how did I come to the point where I'm happy about something so small, right? Like a bucket, something so insignificant. And to give you another example, this thing, a dustpan and brush right? I bought this for five quid. Similar situation. I was like, I, I wanted one for myself because I was like, you know, trying to search for it in the house and like people lose it. People like use it for different things. And I'm like, I can't, I need one to like be able to use all the time whenever I want to. So I just went and bought one for myself. So I have my own personal dustpan and brush. And similarly, I'm happy about something so seemingly insignificant, right? Like, why would you be happy about a dustpan and brush? Right? Seems really weird. And similarly, a pillow, right? I'm obsessed with natural materials. And so when I discovered about duck feather pillows and them being like a really good alternative to like, you know, cheap polyester pillows, I was like, ooh, that sounds cool. But I thought, okay, they're quite expensive, but I found that you can get them for really cheap. And I have several in my room right now and I'm really happy. Like these kind of things make me super, super happy. Like when I when I sit down and look at a bucket and think, that's really cool. I have a bucket. That's strange. But then I look at other things. I'm like, okay, a pillow, a dustpan and brush, and all these kind of little things that people don't generally sit down and smile about. I'm there, happy, as if I'm like high on like some kind of drug or something, right? How does that happen? How does someone become happy about something so small, right? I don't have anything fancy either. I don't have any fancy watches, no fancy cars, not a big house or anything like that. And I'm fine with that. And maybe I aspire to this one day, right, when I become rich or when I get some success. But right now, I'm fine without these things, right? In fact, I'm the happiest I've ever been. I'm not pretending here. Like you can see by the look of my face, this is a genuine smile. I'm not pretending to be happy for the sake of a video and like pretending to just like, oh, here's how to be happy, guys. Just do this, this and this. This is like genuine experience I've had in my life in terms of like, I used to be depressed. I used to be like a miserable person. I used to bring the mood of the room down, right? I can tell you from experience. And now I'm one of the happiest people I know. I'm like annoyingly happy. Like people <laughs> tell me to tone it down sometimes because I'm just so cheery sometimes. I'm like dancing on the inside. It's amazing to feel. Especially the difference between what I used to be as a generally sad person, right? So how is that? My name is Dylan Alexander. And today I want to teach you what I learned over that course of time, that period in my life where things changed and <laughs> apparently... I'm able to be happy about such small things as a bucket or a dustpan and brush or a pillow, right? I'm going to do that through three tips and then a QA, and a right? And if you want to submit questions to the Q&A, there is the first link in the description or the pinned comment below. You can click on those and that will take you to a place where you can submit questions. So the three tips are the basics, the little joys, and the reframe. 
bit of a shorter video today so i'll tell you what these titles mean when we get to them and they are very very interesting things that i think a lot of people don't really talk about right they're very kind of unique things that i've kind of written down over time to kind of encapsulate ideas i've had in my mind but i've never really communicated to people so this video is going to be what that is today i want to communicate some ideas that i have had during my life that have helped me to be happy about things like this so let's get on with this i'm going to do this with our philosophy right and our philosophy is not to be the average person not to be an npc not to be a sheep right because what we want to be is thinkers we want to think because the unfortunate thing about the people around us is that a lot of us a lot of people don't think they just kind of get on with things and how they want to do things and they don't watch videos like this that help them to change in a positive direction right to become above average to become unique to become something that is extraordinary right and so we aspire to become something unique and something better than what is normal we don't want to aspire to become average right that's not who we are if you're watching this video that's not what we do and in fact there's some stats in the corner here the average person is divorced obese and has less than 1k in the bank and that might be our situation now but we don't aspire to be the average person like that right what we aspire to be is someone who is better right someone who is extraordinary someone who is who stands out as someone who is you know better at life in general right i want to be better i want to do good i want to improve that's the attitude i want to bring to this video so in introducing that i will bring you some ideas that perhaps aren't normal aren't what everyone's doing and so that's what the attitude i want to bring to this is that's the kind of philosophy i want to bring to this because it won't be normal it won't be normal advice right so with that being said let's start with the first topic the basics so the basics are split into three parts observation savoring and gratitude what does that mean so observation being able to identify good things happening in our lives right so when something good things so so when something good happens being able to kind of note it down and think this is something good instead of just letting it pass by right so let's say for example it's a sunny day you could just get on with your day and just not notice it or you could think okay hmm it's a nice day today just have that thought right the next thing is savoring being able to pause and fully drink in a moment when while we're experiencing it so let's continue with the example of that sunny day right you can pause for a moment wherever you are maybe you're walking to work or maybe you're just out and about you can just pause sit on a bench and think this is really nice the sun's out i just want to enjoy this for a second and just like take a minute out of your day to just sit there and think this is nice i like the feeling of the sun on my skin i like seeing the sunny sky the the blue skies no clouds it's really nice today and that's the act of savoring that moment and the third thing is gratitude right this is the the most the more common thing that people talk about when we talk about like kind of like being thankful for things this is the kind of capstone to the trilogy of stuff that i'm talking about here right being able to make note that something good happened in our lives talking about it in the past tense like after the fact right happened right and so here's the secret right this is a skill that we can sharpen right it's not as if you automatically just switch this on in your brain and you just become someone who's good at observing and savoring and being grateful for the things around you you can sharpen that skill but how do we do that precisely right journaling is probably the most commonly thing commonly talked about thing in this kind of area right it's a solid foundation i journaled for a long time in my life for about 2 or 3 years or maybe longer than that even and it gave me a good foundation to kind of carry it on as a skill just in my general life right i really recommend it it's a solid foundation it's not as if i don't recommend it because i've stopped doing it but it's definitely something that has alternatives 
I'll say that. And the alternatives are something that I use today, right? Some people like prayer. If you're religious or if you just like praying in general, in my mind, prayer for me is a good way to encapsulate the feelings of gratitude, well wishes for other people and for things in life and for goal setting, right? Usually when people pray, they say, thanks for the food, thanks for the house that I'm living under, you know, the well wishes might include, I hope that my grandma gets better this week or something like that. I hope that, you know, the weather gets better. Or like, I'm not, I'm not sure what people pray about, but maybe what's appropriate, but that can encapsulate that kind of feeling. And goal setting as well. Maybe you can say, you know, what I'm hoping to do or accomplish this year is X, Y, Z, right? And you can send that message forth into whatever method or whatever kind of like medium you would like. And prayer is one of those things, right? Those are just my thoughts on on what prayer is to me, right? Nature, right? Surrounding yourself with nature and just taking things in is a good way to kind of have a encapsulation of gratitude, of savoring, of observing things around you. So I like to go on walks pretty much every day. And I like to walk around the fields and see the woods and the views and things like that. I, I live in a pretty nice area. I'm pretty lucky for that as well. And so I like to just go and just in the middle of a walk, just stand there, and just look at the scenery and just take it all in, feel the wind in my hair or or lack thereof and take a mental picture as well. I really, I really like this analogy of taking a mental picture because that's what memories are. Memories aren't really like a highlight reel of videos and things like that we remember more things more as images right so if you just stand there for a second if if you stand there for more than a usual amount of time for 10 seconds 20 seconds 30 seconds and you just look at a scene right? especially if you do it every day that photo of a memory that photograph of a memory will stay in your brain and stick for a longer period of time and especially if you associate it, that with good emotions with happiness, with like, wow, I live in a nice area. This is great. I remember the the feeling of the sun on my skin when this memory was made, right? The savoring, the gratitude. You can do this in combination as well. The journaling, the prayer, the nature thing as well. And so another thing is people, right? Right? A lot of people like to talk about things in their life that they're grateful for, but what about people, right? Do you ever, you know, kind of walk around your house and think, oh, you know, I'm grateful for my mother being here. Or I'm grateful for my wife being here. I'm grateful for my, you know, my sons in my life, my daughters, my children. And do you ever just like, you know, pat them on the head and think, you know, I like you being in my life. I appreciate you. Just give them a random hug, right? It's a nice thing to do. It's a nice thing to kind of like, put into the world and kind of show them that you appreciate them as well it's a very nice gesture for them to feel as well imagine someone just randomly came up to you and says you know what i appreciate you man and just gave you a random hug right it might seem cheesy and weird but it's nice isn't it? you have to admit that it feels nice that kind of thing right and so with your family your friends your your spouse your children things like that that's really nice to do and the reason I have, a, I have a phone here is because I often do this with like old friends, right? Whenever you kind of, you're out and about and you haven't seen them in a while, you see something that reminds them or reminds you of them, right? And so you can just text them and say, oh, I saw this thing earlier. It reminded me of you, right? I have a friend, <laughs> this is a funny story actually. I have a friend who has like a, <laughs> I don't even know if I should say this. He has like a, a little bit of a smaller head size right (laughs) just ridiculous story but i just i saw a guy with a similarly small head right and i was like i was kind of chuckling to myself about it but i was like you know what i'm just gonna text him right i saw a guy with a small head reminded me of you right i was just a bit of a funny exchange and he told me in return yeah i saw a youtube video with 15 views it reminded me of you and i was like yeah okay fair enough touche (laughs) touche and so in that way 
you can connect with people and just text people whenever you feel something about them, whenever you're reminded about them, to show that appreciation, to show that you're thinking about them in that moment. And it builds these kind of like nice little moments in your life, in their life. And it's just such a wonderful thing to increase the level of these little bits of joy in your life, right? It's an incredible effect that we can have for each other. It's amazing. So the basics is the fact that we can say this phrase. Isn't X so wonderful? Isn't the fact that I can drink water every day so wonderful? Isn't my house so wonderful? Isn't my mother so wonderful? Isn't my dog so wonderful? Isn't nature so wonderful? Right? These things in our life that we could say this, but we just sometimes forget to say this kind of stuff. And we need a bit of a reminder. And that reminder is built through habits like journaling and specifically thinking about this in our daily lives and acting upon it like we, we might have the thought to we might have the thought of the feeling that okay i appreciate my children i appreciate my parents but we might also think oh they know i appreciate them i don't need to show them right but the thing is it's better and most of the time they need to be reminded that you love them they need to be reminded that you care so it's good for you so you get to because you get to show some gratitude and it puts joy in your life and it's good for them because they get to be reminded that they are appreciated as well and that's an important feeling for people to have like it's, it's one of the biggest reasons that people just leave relationships like marriages and things like that because they just didn't feel appreciated they never got told you know what i appreciate you i love you i appreciate you in my life and i just want to tell you that People don't hear that enough. And it's a sad story. And so if you can be one force, one change in the world that alleviates that, then do that. That at least will fill that hole in your heart and really fulfill your life and the joy that you seek. And the difference can be really big, right? You can you can be living the exact same life and it could seem really depressing and bad, or it can seem incredibly fun. Just depending on your perspective and how you look at things. Right? It's very big. The difference is very, very big. Right? I just want to really hammer that home because it, it it can really it can really make a difference. It can really, really make a difference. Right? You don't have to change much about your life. Just how you see it. Right? In, in a very similar way that this looks exciting and this looks not so exciting. It's just like that. If you impl- implement these kind of habits today, you definitely will feel the difference. So the second tip is the little joys. Similar to what I was talking about at the start of this lecture. People say, buy things you love or love the things you have. Right? And what they mean by that really is you should... You shouldn't go after like buying things. You should love the things that you already have, right? Like learn to appreciate what you have and just be content with that. In my mind, why not both? Right? Why can't you do both of these things? Things to avoid with this, like I obviously get the disclaimer, the kind of warning that they give with this, like why they tell you, right? Don't buy things you love, love the things you have. Right? This is why they say it, because usually these things are not so good. Impulse buying, hoarding, not appreciating what you have already. Like, yes, I understand these are not good things and generally lead to a sadder personality. Right? Impulse buying everything you see, like generally you start to lose taste for what's good and what's nice and you have a you don't have patience, you don't have kind of like a appreciation for what you have hoarding also is a very miserable experience because you're just living in a place where you just don't like the things you you don't like your home you don't like your space because it's full with so much like garbage right and not appreciating what you have like obviously that's pretty clear like if you live in a house that where there's things you don't like that's going to make you miserable right so the simple solution for this is something i got from rajiv surrender or I kind of knew about it already, but he really crystallized this into very clear 
kind of rules, I might say, but they're not really rules. They're more like an attitude to life that he says here, right? And it's generally what he says, I'm paraphrasing here what he says, just to wait before buying. And in that time of waiting, you can think about whether you really love that item, whether you really want that item in your life, right? And the things you already have, if you don't love it, just chuck it. Just get rid of it. Because why is it in your life if it doesn't make you happy? Right? And so in exploring this kind of method of life, this attitude towards life and buying things and keeping things that you love, it's really a journey. There's a, there's a lot to kind of go into this. Like there's exploring things that you want to buy. So for example, like, <coughs> excuse me, with uh, secondhand shops, charity shops, right? Exploring items with a previous life. Right, maybe you can find like a tool, like a hammer, that's like you know, a hundred years old. A hammer's bit that has been used by you know maybe a couple of people before you, and you wonder like how how it's been used and what the people were working on, things like that. And it's really nice to have something that has a story to it, right? A story element to the things that you have in your home, right? And finding those chosen few items over a, a longer period of time, it generally like it makes you appreciate it more because of the fact that you kind of worked and waited and was patient before this item came into your life, right? It seems counterintuitive. Like if I were to give you a a pen, for example, right? Some kind of a pen today, right now, when you wanted it, or I went through a process with you and, you know, you could select, you know, the color of it and you saw what kind of pens were nice to write with and you kind of like explore this territory of like something to buy then you would appreciate it more even though it took longer for you to arrive at maybe even the same pen you'd be like you know what that was an experience that was a journey buying that thing and i i really love that it's part of the object now right beyond even what the object even is it has a story because of what you did to go and you know purchase it to go and obtain it right and that's part of the happiness that's part of the joy as we continue getting rid of lesser items, building a treasure trove, a home that sparks joy in your life. Right? Imagine that over time, you get rid of the stuff that you just don't really feel much about. right? And you build over time things around you, over years, over even decades, of things that you purely like. Not that you feel like, ah, not that you feel like, I don't like that. Stuff that you only feel that you like, right? Nothing in your life, or maybe a lot of the stuff in your life, 99% of the stuff in your life is stuff that you really, really like. Nothing you interact with, or almost nothing you interact with, is something that you don't like to interact with, right? So maybe like you bought your favorite pen, you bought your favorite brush, or you bought your favorite phone, or you bought your favorite like lamp lampshade or you've painted the walls in your favorite color or whatever it is right you build that life that when you look around you makes you happy right especially when combined with the previous title as well when you look around and observe and savor and have gratitude it's a really killer combo right and something i learned from this man And buying something can be a journey, as I talked about before with the pen example, right? When you select a pen and you kind of go through that journey, it becomes part of the essence of that object and it brings you further joy, right? Even though you had to wait for it and put more effort in. And it seems counterintuitive like that, but that's how it works, right? And maybe you can understand what that means when I talk about the pen example. In a similar way that you have a favorite mug, right people have a mug that they really like to use and they just they'll just use that over and over again and just ignore the other mugs that feeling you have over that one mug that you like and i use mug because people generally have a favorite mug that they use or if if another example applies right maybe your favorite pen maybe your favorite calculator maybe your favorite quote i don't know what you might use in your life favorite hammer right imagine that thing and imagine how much you feel about that object right and imagine everything else in your life you feel equally like that 
you have a favorite mug, a favorite hammer, a favorite lampshade, a favorite brush, a favorite keyboard, a favorite guitar, a favorite uh, <laughs> something, like a- anything in life, a favorite bed, a favorite pillow, a favorite pair of slippers, a favorite pair of shoes, a favorite jacket, right? All these things that you just love and feel so much about. Just like it's it's really you get to level this up over time and it's really something that's like people just forget this right the fact that they can upgrade their life like this and the fact that it doesn't cost too much right you can buy things like this for very cheap right the things i have in my life right now have come from very strange places and for very cheap as well because i've had this intention of like i want this kind of thing i'm not not sure where i might get it but i'll keep an eye open for it and it, it just turns up sometimes right so just imagine that everything in your life being something that sparks immense joy to you so in my example we had the bucket that we talked about we had the dustpan and brush we had the pillow right we talked about that kind of stuff and i have a pen right this this pen in fact is one of my favorite pens that i have it is it is my favorite pen full stop actually as the only pen i use right it's like it's fully metal like i don't like plastic materials so i got one like that was specifically fully metal right and it writes very well it's like a very nice kind of like fountain pen if you can see that i'm not sure if you see on the camera there but it's it's so nice to write with and i enjoy writing with it and it's such a joy to use and every time i pick it up and write down something i'm like ah oh, this is such a nice pen right even though it was like something that i kind of like you know had to go out of my way to kind of find and buy and you know just it adds to the experience of using the pen right and i have a duvet as well that i have a story behind as well like the duvet i have right here is so there's a story behind this i at one point in my life was kind of like homeless right so i kind of had to find a space to sleep in and thankfully when i caught a friend of mine she was like yeah you can crash at my place right and she gave me a duvet that was so so nice and i remember sleeping that on that sofa that night i was thinking why is this duvet is this duck feather in this duvet that's crazy that's amazing right and i told her the next morning i was like is this duvet is this duck feather in this duvet and she said yeah it is yeah and she said do you want it because at the time she was moving away and she wanted to get rid of her stuff. And I was like, do I want it? Yeah. <laughs> and so I took it home and I have it to this day as something that I'm really, really happy about. And I have that story behind it as well. Right. That f- very kind friend of mine who not only gave me a place to stay for the night, also left me with a gift of this duvet that I use to this day. Right. And that is something that brings me immense joy in my life right it's very all these things right i can name many more but i'll stop here for the sake of time it's just something that has a story brings me a smile and you can collect things like this in life right i I know a lot of people like to just you know buy the first thing they see and just kind of like you know ignore the story or the joy that it has behind it and just purely think about the utility of it but you're missing out on a bit of joy in your life if you think like that, right? The little joys make a big difference in life. And that's something I want to stick by. If you want to write something down for, from this video, this will be it. The little joys make a big difference, right? That's that's like the, the quote that kind of started the idea for this lecture for today's video. And here's something else as well. If you can't learn to be happy with the little things, then the big things will never make you happy. The fancy car, the big house, when that comes along, when that success for you is a thing, then you won't be happy with that. If you could never be happy with the stuff that you had when you were broke or you didn't have much, then those bigger things will never make you happy. And that's something that I believe to be the truth. Right. And the third thing, the reframe. Okay, this is a bit of a chunky one, so I'm just going to try and get through this as quickly as possible because I realize I'm already halfway through, or sorry, half an hour through this lecture. So let's get through this very quickly. 
the reframes that I have in my life are kind of frameworks that I use to switch up a bad situation into a happy event in my mind. So we have the always rule, the fine law, and the big picture. I'll get into what these mean as I talk about those. The always rule. So basically this is the fact that bad things happen, but what if I ask myself this question? What if it was always like this? What if this happens a thousand times in a row, right? So for example, I don't know why, the the example I chose for this video was the shower pressure being low. So I was in a shower like maybe a couple of weeks ago and the shower pressure was kind of low. I was like, oh, what? Why is the shower pressure low, right? And I felt this kind of angry, annoyed feeling bubbling up inside of me. I was like, hmm, okay, let me think about this. Because I could just be like, it doesn't really matter. It's fine. I eventually settled with this emotion rather than that angry emotion, that annoyed emotion. Because I asked myself the question, I was like, what if the shower was always like that? What if I, what, what if I had a thousand showers like this in my life? Would I still care? Would I still be annoyed at it? Probably not, right? What if all the showers in the world were like this one, right? I probably wouldn't care, right? What if I had, like, what if this was the best shower in the world and all the other ones were even lower than that, right? It kind of reframed things and I was like, you know what? This isn't a massive deal. Like, I don't really care that much. It's because I have an expectation of the shower being normally high pressure. It's lower than usual. Why am I being so annoyed about it? I don't really care. Right? So I could, I could just choose. I know it's a controversial choice, but your mood is a choice. You're sad out of choice. You're happy out of choice. I can choose to be annoyed or just, you know, calm about it. Right? And you see this in people. People in the same situation, they tend towards being annoyed or they tend towards being calm about it. And these are a type of people, right? You meet people who are generally angry about the world, right? And you meet people who are generally calm about the world. It's not as if their worlds are different. They don't live on different planets. They just didn't, they just have a different attitude towards life. There is an angry, annoyed attitude and there is a calm attitude to have towards life. And one framework that I like to use to get there is what if it was always like this? I wouldn't really care, would I? Right? Just kind of a, a mental game, a mental kind of like process to go through to kind of remind yourself it isn't a big deal. It's not the end of the world, right? Similarly, the fine law, the second part here, the second reframe. So let me tell you a story. So I've told this story before. It was a time when I was kind of homeless and I put that in uh, quotation marks there because I wasn't technically homeless. I was traveling and I didn't have a place to stay. Let me put it that way. I had a lot of bags with me. I was like, you know, about to go like camping and hiking, things like that. So I had like a lot of kit with me, right? And so the plan was I'll take the train to a certain town, a certain location, right? And I would stay a night at a friend's place, right? It was kind of an acquaintance of mine, right? Didn't know him too well. So I said, you know, I text him months in advance because he was someone I didn't really know too well and said, you know, can I stay here? Like, I'm just, I'm going coming on these dates. I told him all the information and kind of like, you know, noted it down in text and like, and I called him in ahead of time. And so the plan was to stay a night at that place. And then my other friends who I was traveling with would pick me up and we would go hiking and enjoy the rest of the journey, right? But I needed to stay at this place for one night because that's just how the train times were. And it just happened to be the case, right? Just take that as a given, right? The day I arrive, Right. So remember, I planned this months ahead of time. Right. I call the person ahead of time. And so this is what happened when I arrive. Right. I get my phone out and I turn off the kind of airplane mode because usually I'm on airplane, but I don't like to be disturbed by other people. So I'm like, OK, let's check, check in with this guy. Right. Because I arrive in town with the train station, but the house is quite far away. So I'm just kind of wandering through town, just buying a few bits and pieces that I might need for the trip, getting a haircut, things like that. And I kind of wait on a bench. And I'm like, okay, let's call this guy and see. And just like warn him that I'm about to come to his house. So I open my phone. I get seven missed calls or something like that. And 12 messages. Like some like large amount of number 
of missed calls and messages, right? I'm thinking, oh dear, what's happening here, right? So in essence, what he tells me is, I'm so sorry, I mixed up the dates, I'm actually not in town, you don't have a place to stay, right? And he kept apologizing, I was like, look, don't worry about it, I'm sure I can figure something out. And I was like, no, no, I'm so, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, like, maybe there's something I can do, I'm not. I was like, look, don't worry, it's okay. I just wanted to calm him down at this point, right, because he seemed so flustered and so worried about it. Look, don't worry, I'll figure something out. <laughs> I was thinking in my head, I was like, oh, this guy, like, what the hell? But I just told him, look, it's all right, I'll figure something out, right? So the plan was ruined. And so therefore, I was effectively homeless, right? And so remember, I had all my stuff with me, like four or five bags worth of things, like heavy bags, like a big hiking backpack and a, a, a backpack I was wearing on the front of me and two bags I was carrying. And so how would you feel in this moment, right? You have all your stuff with you, no place to stay, in a town that is kind of like empty at this point like at the at the point in time i was visiting it was kind of empty right and it's kind of like ah i don't know what to do here right most people when they face a situation like this would panic would kind of have an anxiety attack they were like oh my goodness what do i do what's going to go wrong and i'm like they'd like panic and just like have a very very bad time right but for me I applied the fine law in that moment in time, right? I was like, homeless? What's the worst that can happen? It's a, it's a pretty nice day. I could probably find a bench to sleep on, maybe. I'm not sure. I was kind of laughing to myself about the situation, right? I was completely calm. In fact, I was thinking about telling the story to my grandkids or something like this. Turns out I'm telling it to you guys. But I was just looking around. I was like, okay, I can sleep on that bench. I'm, I'm just kind of like laughing at the situation. Like, okay, this is something I could tell as a story. Like, worst case scenario... If everything fails, I can just, you know, sleep on a bench, laugh about it, and just continue the next day, right? It wouldn't, like, I. it's not the end of the world, right? And that's one of the things, right? Worst case scenario, things will be probably fine, right? And that's the phrase I repeat to myself. I'll probably be fine. No matter what happens in life, we will probably be fine. We will survive. We will get through to the other side, whether it's a breakup or a death in the family or something even like so bad happening, right? Maybe you, you have to amputate, amputate your foot. You'll probably be fine, right? Even the worst case, I'm just picking the worst case scenarios because I want to make an example of this. It still works. This phrase you can repeat to yourself still works. And thankfully, I called a friend of mine and actually this is the same friend that gave me that duvet right and this is the story of that happening right and so thankfully this person gave me a sofa to sleep on for the night and i wasn't homeless but in reality i would have been fine like i i slept knowing or kind of went on with the day knowing that i probably would be fine right but in my mind i would have been fine right that's what i would just said just now right and the moral of that story is i realize the value of a calm mind in a situation like this. I, I sat there and thought, you know, most people right now, or me, maybe even me in the past, I probably would have felt so scared maybe three years ago, right? But in that moment in time, I was calm and I was like wondering, why am I so calm? I mean, I should be stressed, right? It's because I've kind of taught myself this value, this law called the fine law that states that everything's probably going to be fine right and that led me to having a calm mind and therefore a more joyous life in general right having joy in your life isn't just about having joy it's about eliminating negative stuff right so like the lack of joy sadness and anxiety and like scaredness or whatever the word is for that right and so i repeat this controversial thought again your mood is a choice and you can see in that story how I chose how to act and how I chose how to react to the situation, even though, you know, in another moment in time or maybe in my past I might have been scared, in that moment I chose to be calm and even laugh about it, right? So that's something that I feel like a lot of people 
fine to be a very controversial thought or fine to be something that isn't true. It definitely is true. I've known this to be true. It's a teaching of Stoicism that is probably the most controversial. Happiness is a choice, right? So if that sounds very controversial to you, try your best to wrap that around your head and think about that for a second. Everything is absolutely fine. This is the bottom line here. That's the phrase you've got to kind of repeat to yourself. And I got this from a book by Darren Brown called Happy. If you want to read that, it's a very big book and it's absolutely great. It talks about stoicism in all its details and it's fantastic to read. So go and read that if you would like to read more. So the last one, the big picture, finally getting towards the end here. This is one of my favorite quotes from any movie that I've ever watched right and it goes like this life moves pretty fast so there's a character i'm sure you recognize this movie ferris bueller's day off and this is ferris bueller and at the end of the movie he has this big adventure he takes a day off school and does all kinds of different things right and so he says at the end life moves pretty fast if you don't stop and smell the roses every once in a while then you could miss it right And that, for me, really hit me hard. This is my face, a real picture of my face at the time of listening to that quote, right? And I was like, that is so true. A lot of people in life just keep their head down and don't really look around the world around them. And loads, like like swaths of time pass by without you noticing because you didn't just, you know, you were just like kind of head down, kind of like not looking at anything. You didn't just peep up and think, how are, how's the, the weather today? How's, how's things looking, right? You just kept your head down, just like, kind of like ignored everything around you. you. Just You could miss it. You really can miss it. And you see it in people, right? So take it all in. That's the lesson you learn. Take it all in or else you could end up like one of these people. Working a day job, 40 years of their life. And they think, where did the time go? What what happened to that time? I don't even remember what happened the past five years, the past 10 years, the past 20, 30, 40 years. Right? And scratch that, where did my life go? Right? That's the more important thing that someone might say to themselves and maybe not even want to admit in public. So that's the, the depth of that quote there, Right? You've got to stop every once in a while and smell the roses. And what that means is just take a pause and just like look around you and what's going on. Or else you could just miss it. You can miss your life. Like imagine how serious that is. And for me, it's certainly a massive priority. So look around you. Yes, right now, while you're watching this video... There's not too many fancy graphics on the screen. You won't miss anything here. Look around you, right? And take a mental picture. Click, right? Look at like what I've got around me right now. A coat hanger, a chair, my black towel, this microphone, this webcam. I've got that pen I showed you. I've got this brush. I've got this calculator. So I'm like, I've got like some random things around my place. And right now I can just pause And take a mental picture of where I am. And like do that with me right now. Like pause the video if you would like to have more time for it. Just take it in. Remember this moment. Because as mundane as it is, as boring as it sounds. You remember this just because you paused and looked at it. Right? And you might be glad in a year's time for you doing this. I remember that space. Maybe you've moved out, maybe you moved places, maybe you you changed your setup of your room or something, even trivial like that. But you remember this moment in time because you just sat back and did that, right? Remember this. And in a very similar way, people can be caught in this trap with social media, with their addiction to their phones, with just watching Netflix all day, right? If that's your world, then you'll have less memories of the real world, right? I'm not saying you shouldn't ever use your phone, but 
every once in a while, just look up. Go for a walk without your phone. You know, just kind of like sit down at the edge of your bed and just look around your room. Look at the posters you have up. Look at the the things you have, your laptop, your your TV screen, your your bed, the carpet, the floor, the things you have in your desk, you know, your your gym stuff, your clothes, whatever it is. This is a moment in time and like Ferris Bueller said, you could miss it. Because life is made of mo- made out of moments of time. Right? Life is all a journey. Right? People say it's about the journey, not the destination, but li- that's what life is. Life is a journey. You're born, you do stuff, you die. It's all a journey. So remember these moments. Remember this moment right now, at least. Because it's important. And keep doing that. And it's not just about the good times. Like I said, it's about boring times, maybe even bad times, right? Even tough times are golden memories, right? Every tough moment in your life is a chance to grow that mental toughness muscle. If life is tough, that means you're becoming stronger, right? People that haven't had a tough life, generally speaking, aren't interesting people. They never struggled ever. That tends not to be someone who is interesting to talk about. Not someone with depth, not someone with character, right? Because one day you'll look back at this tough moment and smile. I'm sure, I bet you can think of times like that. Maybe you broke up with a girl. Maybe, you know, you got injured. Maybe someone, you lost someone in your life. Maybe something bad happened and you were really down in the dumps for a while. Maybe your business is failing. Maybe your kind of (laughs) passion project isn't really taking off yet. And you feel depressed about that. But even remembering those moments is powerful, right? Looking back at that kind of time is such a good thing, especially when you've finally succeeded at that. You remember that entire time. Like I spent, you know, this many years failing and failing and failing and I finally succeeded and the success tastes so much better after that amount of time because it just comes after patience, after kind of, working at yourself and working at this thing for so long and you learn so much and you've become tough right if you had to build a character and give him patience you'd make him wait you'd make him go through tough times to make him tough so what's the difference in your life if you're going through a tough time you're just leveling up your character and that's a good thing right So remember that in your life, especially if you're going through a tough time right now, you're leveling up. So that's done with the three tips right there. Let's move on to the Q&A. So to submit your questions, I have a community page, right? It's free for a limited time. It's called Thinkers Academy, right? It's the first link in the description below or the first pinned comment. It's free for life right now, okay? It will change So lock in your price right now. If you click now and join now, it will be $0 for the rest of your life, right? Do it now because it will go up to $129 a month. So go check now. If it's free now, I would join now. It's a no-brainer. Join now because it's free, right? You're getting something that's, you know, going to be worth money for free for the rest of your life. So join now, okay? As I said, first thing in the description and the pinned comment below, it will look like this when you open up. Join group right here. Click that and you'll be let in. And there's a ton of bonus content available on there as well. So this is the kind of classroom tab and there's so much more content that I can't release on YouTube because it's like either way too long or just like, you know, very, very concise information or one of the live calls I do on this community page as well. So if you like this and you enjoyed it so far, then go on ahead and join that to get access to those videos there. But more about that later. The Q&A. Let's go with the first question. I get what you're saying, but I don't think money is a bad thing. We all need it. Yep, agreed. Would you say that money can't buy happiness or that aspiring to be rich is bad? I agree with the first statement, yet we all need it. Yes, that's just a fact of life. Money 
I wouldn't say it's a bad thing, right? My philosophy around it is that... So with your, let's say with your first statement, right? Would you say that money can't buy happiness? I say that it definitely can, right? I say money itself doesn't automatically mean happiness. It's like a key that can unlock, you know, the door to happiness, right? Money can definitely also bring you to ruin, right? Money can also, you know, buy you things that are not so good and might not make you happy. But it can also definitely make you happy. It's an opportunity. It's like a, it's a, it's a tool that you can use. It's a, it's a kind of a, yeah, I think tool is the best word for it. A tool can be used for different things. A tool, like a knife in the kitchen, can be used to make a tasty meal. A knife in the wrong way can kill someone, right? So money is somewhat like that. And I think generally, in terms of average population, the happiness level tends to increase with money up until, I think it's about 100K, right? 100K dollars, Maybe that's like, I think that's like 75k pounds, right? I think that's what's been studied and proven to be like the the max point of happiness. After that, it actually goes down a little bit, right? Or maybe I think it plateaus or goes down. I think it goes up sharply and then it goes down very shallowly. I think that's what the graph says. I've not looked at these studies in a long time, but it's something like that. So that's what the studies say. I think if you're very wise about it and you're very careful about it, and you know you take some advice that i might have mentioned in this video and some more then i don't think you should limit yourself to 100k right i think even as a billionaire right you will learn how to spend that money in ways that make you happy right if you're very careful about it and you're wise about it right this this is a key factor then you will know how to spend that to make you happier Right? It might not be about the fancy cars and the yachts and the big houses. It might be about how you can spend that to help people, to spend time with family, to, you know, you know, fly private so you can like spend less time traveling and spend more time with people, let's say. Right? Spend like spending money in these kind of ways to kind of like bring the positive benefits in your life, the the, the stuff that kind of brings you joy, fulfillment. Not kind of like an easy pleasure or kind of like, you know, how do you call this? Instant gratification, right? You kind of have to learn what what types of spending brings you happiness, really, right? Because a lot of the people I look up to in terms of their journey of being rich often go through this kind of thing. They either... Well, they they end up buying a lot of stuff because they grew up poor and they become rich and they buy a bunch of things, fancy cars, houses, and then they end up thinking, this doesn't make me happy. And they sell all of it. Alex Hormozzi, Sam Ovens, these people, like this, these stories that they tell are like that, right? And so they end up cutting back their spending and just living a relatively simple, like, like they're still living lavishly, but not nearly as lavishly as they could be, Right? And so that's what I say about this kind of thing. Aspiring to be rich is not bad. I think it's great to aspire to be rich because like, the only way you get rich is by providing value, right? Or at least by providing perceived value to people, right? And so being rich isn't inherently in itself a bad aspiration. I think it's great to be wanting to be rich and money can buy happiness if you're wise about it. So that's my answer to that. <clears throat> One thing I heard for good, one thing I heard is good for happiness levels is giving to charity or giving to people in general. How do you do that when you're broke? Okay, this is a very good one. I've often had this thought in life that is, it's easy to be kind when you are rich. And I kind of, I had to think about that and kind of to break it down and think, okay, what can I still give as someone who's broke, right? I can give my time. I can give my thought. I can give things that don't require money, right? Just thinking about someone in the day, right? Thinking like like the gratitude thing, like the kind of appreciation thing, randomly hugging someone, 
and randomly like maybe buying them something that isn't too expensive not everything that someone values is you know high kind of a uh, price tag right maybe it's like something that they they've been searching for for a while and you happen to find one in a random shop somewhere and you buy this item for them because you you thought about them right that's that's that thoughtfulness right and you buy that for them because you thought about them right and it doesn't cost much. maybe it costs like you know one dollar two dollars and you buy that and that's something that they enjoy right so time is also another one, right? Spending time with them. Sometimes what someone wants is just time with someone, right? Like maybe your parents, when you move out, when you're like 30 years old, you can buy them all the fancy things. You can buy them a fancy car, you can buy them a house, but maybe all they want is time with you. Going to visit them like during the holidays or maybe like a couple weekends a year, spending time with them, like a lot of parents, if they could choose, would choose the time over the fancy car. The time over the fancy house or the money, just like the a lavish lifestyle. They'd rather just spend time with you, right? Because that's what kind of matters to them. Time, right? Time, thought. And I'm sure there's other things that don't involve money that I'm not thinking right now off the top of my head. Maybe things like knowledge. That's something that's just popped into my mind right now, like like books. So I've gifted many people books in my life, right? So knowledge in general or slash books, send them a video, whatever you want, right? Books tend to be a very giftable thing to give to people. And I love giving books, right? There's like one book in, in particular I mentioned during this video, actually, it's called Happy by Darren Brown. And I've given that book many times. And I keep buying it again because I like the book and I keep giving it away because it's such a nice book and it's such a, when people are interested in what I'm talking about, I just give them this book because it's, it's a good book to kind of like read really deep into it, right? If they're really interested in it, right? So knowledge is a thing like that. Things that generally aren't tangible, right? So thoughts, love, care, knowledge, kindness, these things you can give to people and time as well. So it's, kind of good being poor because you get to realize or like you have to kind of solve the equation of what can I give even though I don't have much in terms of material possessions in terms of money what can I still give you have to think that through and kind of resolve that for yourself and come up with some kind of answer and this is some, some kind of answer that I come up with right now because I've thought about this kind of thing in the past but I'm sure there are many more things that you can think of as well. So that's my answer for that. Number three, how do you know what stuff is worth keeping around in life and what stuff is worth buying? I feel like I just want to keep everything just in case and I have a tough time knowing what to buy and not to buy. Are there some rules to this? So I don't want to constrict you by putting rules on you. I would say... Maybe go back to that part of the lecture that I, I did just now and just kind of look at those rules. And that's the only kind of rules I would say. But <sighs> it's also a skill that you work on over time. You realize by looking at things and just having this thought in your mind, right? Maybe you're finding it difficult because you've never thought about this before, right? So just purely having that thought in your mind, I'm just going to draw a picture of a brain here, right? Having that thought in your mind will lead you to be able to see things, right? This is an eyeball, to see things in life, right? So maybe item number A or item B or C, like you'll be able to decipher, okay, what do I love? What do I really, really feel bigly about? Sorry, not bigly, feel intensely about. <laughs> bigly, that's not even a word. And you will start to identify things. Oh, I like A. I don't like B. B's not so good. C's kind of in the middle, but okay, if I want to really, really like it, I've got to eliminate C, right? And you'll be able to identify things and say, okay, A is something I really like, right? And it's a process over time. It's, it takes years to kind of be able to build up 
a treasure trove of items or be a, even be able to identify what you even like because you've never thought about it before. And it certainly was the case for me. Like, I never cared about what it was in my life. I'll use whatever tool I want. But then I was like, but I I like some things more than others. And I worked on that skill and just kind of refined over time and just kind of, I liked doing that. I liked the ability or the skill or the the act of perfecting the world around me, perfecting my home around, right? So I began to enjoy throwing things out, right? And I began to enjoy buying like small things over a long period of time that I really enjoyed, right? And so it's not a huge deal if you don't know exactly what you like right now because you will build that over time, right? So your question says, how do you know what stuff is worth keeping around in life and what stuff is worth buying? Just try and think about like the top 10% of stuff. That's what I would say. If something isn't like, you know, five stars, right? Like absolutely perfect kind of thing, then get rid of it, right? And that might mean you have very few items, right? Like for me, for example, I have very few clothes. I have very few items in general in my room. My room is like mostly empty. I like it that way. It's good. It's nice, right? I like being minimal and being minimal is part of that kind of effect of building a perfect home around you, building a perfect kind of like space around you, right? And so, yeah, it's kind of a thing you do over time and kind of like, it's essentially being fussy in a strategic way. That's what this is, right? And that's the answer I kind of give. Like, I know it's kind of vague to kind of say that, but it's it's something you build over time. This is something you might have to be patient with. And it's something it's, it's not as if it's like, a, you know, you have to wait to be happy here. Like you can start being happy now. Like it's it's a process. You start and it's like exciting. You learn things about yourself. You learn things about the world. You learn things about how you can make yourself happy. You learn things about how you can make things really nice for yourself, right? You get into things like DIY. You might be like modify the layout of your room, like build a cupboard or build like a, a table. Like it gets really exciting. It gets really nice to do. And it's something that develops constantly over time. And it's really, <laughs> it's really nice if I can say that for the thousandth time in a row. And yeah, I think I've answered that question. Okay, let's move on. Okay, end of questions. Fantastic. So I promise you some details about that community page. It's a community page. It's free for life. So join now. Go click on that, right? It's an exclusive community page. I do live calls. Right now, I'm doing them twice a week now. And I'm trying to increase that as we go along, as more and more people come to join. More people are coming to join right now. It's, it's really kind of like growing at an unexpected rate right now. And it's a high value network, one to one coaching. So, literally, I will answer your questions one to one and just on the call live, right? So, if you would like that, if you enjoyed this video, if you watched this far through such a long video, then you'll definitely enjoy a call like that once, twice, three times a week, right? And you'll be able to communicate and message and talk to like minded members as well. So, go ahead and click that if you would like. So the video at the front page, the about page includes all the details you want to know. And there is bonus content as well, of course. So a little recap, the basics, observing the world around you, savoring the moment when you're in it, when you've identified that moment in time and having some sense of gratitude. We can do this through different methods. So there's the journaling method, the prayer method, being in nature, appreciating nature, family and friends and people around you. There's little joys, part number two. So the bucket, the dustpan and brush, the pen, the pillow, the small things like this that seemingly are unusual to be happy about, but who cares, right? If you're happy, you're happy, right? That's the end goal here. Why do you care about other people's judgments, right? Right? Like, I'm aware that you might judge me for loving a bucket, <laughs> but I don't care. I'm happy, and that's what matters to me, right? And that's what I kind of mean when I talked about it at the start. 
the kind of thinker's attitude, the unique attitude that's not average, not NPC, not sheep-like behavior. You're not afraid to be different. You're not afraid to think differently, right? The reframes, probably the most important part of this lecture, right? So the first one was the always rule. What if this negative event always happened? It happened a thousand times. It was just, that was how it was. Would I still care? Probably not. The second thing, the fine law. No matter how atrocious or bad the events in your life, it's probably going to be fine. Even if they have to cut your foot off, it's probably going to be fine. Right? And I related a story about me being supposedly homeless and me thinking that it was kind of a joke. Something I could tell my grandkids. And something that, you know, didn't really matter because it's fine. And the last one was the big picture right so i related the story the quote from ferris bridge say off that if you don't pause every once in a while and look around you then you, you could just miss that time in your life you could just miss your whole life so remember that and pay attention and look up every once in a while and look at the world around you and remember this moment i am certain these tips will help you today and for the rest of your life if you remember and practice them in your daily life and so with that being said thanks for watching i'm going to say something that we say at the end of every video and that is knowledge is power and the power is yours keep happy so thanks for watching take care of yourselves until next time peace have a nice day